It's your boy, Sneaky Fox here, back with another conference tournament bracket prediction. And today, we're doing the Big Ten. Uh, my last one, I did the ACC, so if you haven't seen that one, go check that out. As well as uh, go check out the WCC tournament prediction that I have. Both of those will be up in the uh, top right-hand corner, just annotated throughout the video. I guess top right would be over here. Well, that way. Anyway, <laughs> we're going to get started on the Big Ten. So, first things first, going over the top seed, Illinois Fighting Illini, have a tied record. So, they're co-winners uh, co of the Big Ten, along with Wisconsin. However, due to the head-to-head -head matchup, uh, Illinois won, I think it was 80-67. to 67 at Champaign, so that was the only meeting between them, so therefore Illinois gets the top seed. Now, the only way that was possible is going into the last day, Nebraska had to beat Wisconsin at Wisconsin, while um, Illinois also had to beat Iowa at Illinois. So, the like me being an Illinois fan, it's just the way things fell into place, so you know I was happy with it. But overall, uh, I'm not honestly sure if the uh, one line is actually easier or more difficult than the two line. So we'll have to talk about that a little bit later. Uh, up third is Purdue with a record of 14-6. and six. Rutgers Scarlet Knights getting a four seed and getting that coveted double bye so they don't have to play until Friday. Iowa and Ohio State. Also at 12 and 8 records, but uh, lost the tiebreaker to Rutgers. Michigan State at the 7 line with Michigan at the 8. We have Indiana at the 9 line. Maryland at the 10. Well, teams 5 through 10 all get the single buys, you can see here. And then uh, Penn State, Northwestern, Nebraska, and Minnesota round out the final four positions in the conference. So let's get started first with the 12 versus 13 matchup, Northwestern versus Nebraska. And I'm going with the small quote-unquote upset here, Nebraska over Northwestern. Nebraska has just been on a quote-unquote hot streak. They've won their last three all on the road, so you have a win at Penn State. And then they go to Ohio State and win there. And like I just mentioned, they beat Wisconsin on the road. So two of their past three wins have been uh, ranked teams on the road. So I think Nebraska carries that momentum with them over Northwestern. And that's that. Moving on to the 11 versus 14 matchup. Penn State finished 7-13, and 13, while Minnesota finished 4-16. and 16. Uh, looking at the scoring, uh, Penn State, Minnesota, both at the bottom of the uh, points per game. Penn State at 64.7 points per game with Minnesota at 67.6. So they are the two teams with the uh, slowest pace of play. That or the least number of shots that are fall. So unfortunate uh, for them, but depending on how they like their play style. You know, to each their own. Um, Penn State with 43% from the field, 34% from three, and 73% from the line, whereas Minnesota is 44% from the field, 37% from the uh, field goal, or from the three-point line, and 71.8 from the... Uh, um, free throw line. I'm checking their head-to-head -head match real quick. Uh, Penn State um, scores. Let's see. Um, so Penn State won the first matchup. Or no, sorry. Minnesota won the first matchup, 76-70. And then Penn State won that second matchup, 67-46. Uh, so um, they split, split there. There. Uh, I think I'm going to have to go with Penn State 
They've just been they were playing better basketball than Minnesota down the stretch. I mean, they only lost to Illinois by five. They lost to uh, Rutgers on the last day by one, which that was a really good game to watch. Um, that being said, we're gonna move on to the uh, Thursday's game or Thursday's day of games. Starting off, Michigan versus Indiana. This is gonna be a tough matchup uh, to predict. Michigan obviously has the uh, lead in uh, record at eleven and nine versus nine and eleven. Uh, ten and five at home, five and seven on the road. However, just getting a huge win at Ohio State this past Saturday, or this past Sunday. Sorry about that. Um, Indiana, fourteen and four at home, three and seven on the road, fifteen and sixteen overall. So two and one in, or no, sorry, one and zero on um neutral court. I was looking at Maryland here, but uh, Hunter Dickinson versus Trace Jackson Davis. That's probably going to be the matchup that people are looking for. Although. There has been some smart or um, strong guard play from uh, Davion Jones from the Wolverines. I think I'm gonna have to go with Indiana here, though. Uh, I don't know. Something, something in my guts just tell me to go Indiana over Michigan. Moving on to Nebraska versus Iowa. <laughs> Unfortunately, Nebraska, your run is going to end here. Iowa is just. They're the second team in the conference in points per game at 80.7. So uh, they – or no, sorry. They are number one at 83.3 points per game. I don't know why I was looking at the second place, which is Purdue. But uh, Iowa, the top uh, team in points per game here, shooting about 46% from the field, 36% from three, and 75% from the free throw line. Uh, yeah, this can Iowa, if they can maintain defense, then this is their game. I can't let Nebraska get into a, uh, I can't let Nebraska, um, get going offensively because, uh, while Iowa can shoot the ball and can score a lot, their defense isn't the best. So I've seen a lot of people say that's what's going to let them down. However, I think it will be strong enough to, uh, Take care of Nebraska. Moving on to the 7 versus 10, we have Michigan State versus Maryland. These two teams played this past Saturday uh, with Michigan State getting a 20-point lead early. However, uh, like I want to say mid-second half, uh, Maryland had it to within two, but uh, was not able to finish the comeback and ended up losing to Michigan State. Uh, Michigan State is... At 72.1 points per game, shooting 46% from the field, 38% from three-point, and uh, nearly 75% from the free-throw line, compared to Maryland's 70.9 points per game, at about 44% from the field, about 33% from three-point, and 76% from the uh, free-throw line. Um, I think I'm going to have to go with Michigan State. While they were... Uh, at home that last game uh, and had that quick start. They did kind of slip toward the middle to to, uh, end, but they do have the veteran coach, uh, Tom Izzo, uh, who just passed Bobby Knight for most Big Ten wins, so congrats to him. Uh, And I think Michigan State will uh, carry that into their matchup against Maryland and defeat them and defeat the Terrapins. Moving on to Penn State versus Ohio State. I feel like it's a no-doubter right now. Like, you got EJ Liddell, Malachi Branham. I, I'm probably butchering the last name, but those two, especially against Illinois, were killer. And I know uh, Malachi has been playing out of his mind recently. And uh, he looks to be on the uh, freshman uh, team of the year for the Big Ten. Uh, I just don't see a way that Penn State can stop them, especially scoring uh, 74 points per game 
shooting at a uh, 47.5% clip, 37.3 from three-pointer, and then nearly 76% from the free throw line. Uh, moving to the double buy, the round of the double buys, I should say. Indiana versus Illinois. I got Illinois here. Uh, their one matchup earlier this year, it was close uh, throughout the first half and then part of the second half, and then Illinois just pulled away. Uh, Trent, I think Trent, Trent, yeah, that was a game Trent Frazier took over a second half and basically left uh, Indiana in the dust. I know Trey Jackson Davis had a lot of foul trouble during that game. However, it seemed like uh, Indiana at that game was uh, unaffected by it and actually may have played better without him in the lineup. That was just my take on that game. But uh, Indiana, or not, not Indiana, uh, Iowa versus Rutgers. Rutgers had a string of wins throughout the uh, regular season, and I'm actually pulling it up now. I think it was like five or six wins against ranked team. Um, well, let's see here. Okay, sorry. It was four. It was win at home against Michigan State, win at home against Ohio State, win on the road at Wisconsin, and then win at home against Illinois. And they lost by 12 at Purdue, lost by nine at Michigan, lost by five at home against Wisconsin, and then won at Indiana by three in its most recent game. One at home against Penn State, so they finished six, uh, six and three in their last nine games. But you take a look at home versus away splits for Rutgers. At home, you're fourteen and three. Away, you're four and nine. You finish eighteen and twelve on the season. So that being said. I think I'm going to have to go Iowa here because I know Rutgers, they really thrive off of the rack. And Steve Heichel has done an amazing job like getting that place back up and going to where like the fans are actually like making a huge difference in, in the uh, game. But I think just away from home, they aren't uh, as effective. Rutgers, not the fans. Um, <clears throat> moving on, Wisconsin versus Michigan State. I got Wisconsin. Johnny Davis, which I don't know if he's going to be back or not. I know uh, Greg Gard was uh, mentioning how he expects Johnny Davis to play after the uh, collision in that Nebraska-Wisconsin game, which personally I didn't think it should have been a flagrant two, maybe a flagrant one. But again, that's another one of those cases where I felt like Wisconsin played better without Johnny Davis, except for that last few minutes where I think they blew like a 10 point lead or something like that within the last four or five minutes. Uh, Johnny Davis definitely does have that closer role or that closer aspect to him. Um, but yeah, in that first 10 minute. Or in the 10 minutes that he played in the first half and then the se um, beginning of the second half when he was in, he had 11 points in 10 minutes, but then had to sit due to foul trouble and then obviously left with the injury. So up until that like, last four or five minutes, I thought Wisconsin did well. Um, and it, it almost, almost seems at times that Wisconsin like tries to like, force things to Johnny Davis when they have uh, different shooters like Brad Davison um, is one. And then freshman Chucky Hepburn, he's had a uh, good last few games, especially the uh, three-pointer at um, Wisconsin to seal that one up. Um, let's see here. Ohio State, Purdue. I'm pulling up Purdue because all six of their losses were in Big Ten. So they finished Big Ten 14-6. and six. And uh, five of them were within five-point games. So if it's a close game, it really favors Purdue. Um, 
let's see, they lost on a uh, half-court buzzer beater to Rutgers. Uh, they lost at home by five against Wisconsin. Uh, at Indiana, I was watching that game. That was a really good one. Uh, Jaden Ivey almost tied that at the end of the uh, regulation period. Um, and then they get blown out at Michigan, which they had beat uh, by six points earlier that week. So I don't know if it was just uh, fatigue or what was going on there because they had also played Illinois two days earlier and won that one by 16. Uh, but then they lose at Michigan State and then uh, – oh, no, it was Chucky, Chucky, yeah, Chucky Hepburn won it, um, not against Rutgers, against um, – Purdue with that um, three pointer that that was a crazy one because it was like it was off the glass and it was like there's no way this goes in you just see it off the glass and I'm like what because I was watching the end of the game that was pretty good um and then yeah they finished with a sixty nine sixty seven win over Indiana which could have been going to overtime but um uh, Indiana forced a three thinking they were gonna get fouled but not the case. Uh, anyway, going back to against Ohio State, it looks like they only played once, and that was a three point win for Purdue at Ohio State. Uh, I do think that Purdue has more talent overall. Nope, wrong thing. Um, but yeah, you have Jaden Ivey, Zach Eady, Trevion Williams. You got Sasha Stevanovich, really good shooter. So I do think that Purdue has a lot of uh, units to uh, lead them in battle against uh, Ohio State. Illinois versus Iowa into the semifinals. I got to go Illinois here. Iowa's most recent game against Illinois, they had a 15-point lead at one point in the uh, first half after making 12 shots in a row. Uh, or 12 shots, uh, like shots on 12 different possessions. And then you get it, like Illinois gets it down to six within, or by halftime. And then I want to say down the stretch, Iowa has a chance to take the lead with free throws. And I want to say they missed five of their last six or something like that. And it, it resulted in a two point win for Illinois, but like El or Iowa got a really good look. I think it was uh, Chris Murray who ended up uh, missing the three. I mean, it was a good shot, wide open. Uh, Illinois had two defenders go with the ball and reverse over to Chris Murray, and it just misses it. I think nine times out of ten, or at least eight times out of ten, uh, Chris Murray makes that though. So, being an Illinois fan, we kind of got lucky on that one. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, Iowa has really good play in uh, Keegan and Chris Murray, and then uh, Toussaint, good player as well. And you got um, Fran McCaffrey's uh, kid. Uh, I can't. I don't remember the name. I don't remember his name. Um, but yeah, really good uh, shooter. But anyway, moving on to Wisconsin Purdue, I'm gonna go with Wisconsin over Purdue. Uh, both games have been really close, and uh, I just think that Wisconsin getting the win at uh, at Purdue earlier this year kind of, uh, I don't want to say um, leads me to pick them, but kind of like influences my uh, decision making. Also, uh, I think it was Johnny, Johnny Davis. I don't remember what his stat line was, but I think I want to say he had like twenty points in both games against Purdue. And if Purdue can't like figure out a way to stop him, or like focuses on him too much and then leaves other players open, uh, that could be disaster for Purdue. And another thing, uh, similar to Iowa, Purdue has uh, been considered to like their defense is like what lets them down. Like there's not many teams that are like scoring a ton of points on them, but, uh, that like Purdue can score. Uh, let's see. There's 104 
points over here. There's 96. That, granted, that was a double overtime. 92 on Nebraska early in the year. So uh, they can score, but the question is, can they defend? Um, and I think in uh, this game against Wisconsin, they cannot. And uh, I'm going to have Illinois here winning it all, uh, going back-to-back -back, uh, as they won it last year against Ohio State in overtime. But um, based on the only matchup, Illinois versus Wisconsin earlier this year, uh, it was a close game throughout, uh, and then Illinois just started to pull away. And when you have, uh, like, realistically, I don't think Wisconsin has anyone to stop Kofi. I think he went for 30-plus points in that game. But then you add three-point shooting from uh, Alfonso Plummer, a key transfer from Utah earlier this year. And then you have uh, Trent Frazier, if he's... Uh, if he can hit some as well, he he's also got uh, great passing ability. Uh, Andre Cabello, he's like the only one that I say worries me. Uh, sometimes like you hear a lot the phrase a lot like you take the good with the bad with him, and he just gets like a lot of a lot of the time he gets out of control. So it it's like what are you doing? And you kind of like panic, especially with late game, but um. Uh, overall, I think Illinois will be able to take care of Wisconsin and the championship. But that is going to be it for me. If you have any different picks, let me know in the comments. Uh, if you have any suggestions going forward, let me know as well. And I will see you guys next time.